Here's Philippa Forrester. It's day four at Techno Games. Time to sort the GoBots from the SlowBots. The biggest and the best in cybersports are revving up and getting ready for action. Getting ready for the biggest robot tournament in the world. From the Technodrome at Shepparton Studios, we bring you Techno Games 2002. Coming up, tackling robot style in the football. Ten more swimmers seek the remaining quarter-final places. We have live action from the sumo semis. The lightweight sprinters are raring to go. And don't miss some simply stunning creations in the submersible swimming. And the final of the cycling event. And giving us their piercing insights today, as usual, are Robot Wars veterans Professor Martin Smith of the University of Central England and Professor Noel Sharkey, director of the Creative Robotics Unit at Magnum. The first action we've got for you is from the glamour event of the tournament, the football. This is a new event for Techno Games, and here's how the very first matches turned out on Tuesday. Bug, buggy against Big Bro when it comes to attacking. Oh, and Big Bro lets it slide in. Again, Storm Chaser against a weakened team. Storm Chaser, it's number seven. Barry Davis was watching today's action earlier. Mikey Mouse and Wolf have teamed up together to make a football challenge. Mikey Mouse from Clifton in Nottinghamshire, Wolf from Swanley in Kent. The opposition is provided by Snowstorm from Durham and the Cat's Whiskers from Attleston in Surrey. Mighty Mouse and Wolf at the right hand end. Power up. And away we go, Mighty Mouse gets to the ball first, very nifty indeed, and it's running all along the goal line with no one there to find the finish. Here's Cat's Whiskers trying to clear. Mighty Mouse unable to take the ball. Oh, good play by uh, Snowstorm and a fine goal. Came from deep. Determination lifted the ball, rode the challenge. The ball rolling into the goal. Snowstorm again, but losing out to Mighty Mouse, who equalizes. Snowstorm again. Yes, it's gone in. Second goal for Snowstorm. And a hat-trick. Not quite sure what uh, what the Wolf was doing there. The defender in trouble again, and once again it's Snowstorm. A fourth goal, 4-1 four now. And Snowstorm the top scorer in the championship. Too easy. All the goals from Snowstorm. Mighty Mouse finding it very difficult down that right side. Snowstorm now is taken out of the play though quite beautifully. Gets his own back, takes on the world and his wife, and the ball is going to go in, and Snowstorm, can it recover? Yes, no, yes! <laughs> Goal was yawning, but it took an awful long time to get the fifth. 5-1, and all five, and now six, scored by Snowstorm. Been a pretty unequal contest down the right side. Poor Mighty Mouse has been muscled out of it, and now concedes an own goal. 7-1, managed to get hold of the ball, was buffeted away as it was trying to turn. That state of affairs for Mighty Mouse and Wolf, beaten by seven goals to one, all but one of those seven scored by Snowstorm. Within seconds, goals were scored. It was a high-scoring match as well, wasn't it? Yes. Well, for some. Snowstorm's <laughs> such one. a spectacularly good robot. Mm. It's got very, very good uh, directional control. They can um, go in a very good straight line, and then they can put an electric motor on to change the speed of the two wheels. It's a very clever, it's original, there's no other robot that does it, and it gives them very good straight line accuracy and very fast turning ability too. What I find disappointing, and, and 
perhaps a little bit unfair because it's not the rules of football, but Mighty Mouse was really fast, very manoeuvrable, and they kept the, they bullied it and blocked it a lot. Cat's Whiskers is worth a mention because it's it's the most powerful robot there with two one kilowatt motors, I think. Is it yeah. really? But it hasn't got the directional control, so it missed an obvious goal because of its lack of controllability. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll have coverage of the footy match featuring the Savage Toaster and Celestial Terror teams battling for a semi's place later in the show. Next up tonight, though, we've got more action from the pool in the swimming. This is the story of the event so far. And the world record is in its sights, and Boyan makes it in the corner to be the second qualifier. Nautilus Mega Kid comes in in 31.19, and K9000 does get away from Supersonic Squiddy. Tad One wins. Hydra Two comes in in second place. Hypocrite is coming in alone, and it beat the Penguin. Some of the competitors more freestyle than others there, but for the best of today's action, it's back to Barry. Three schools teams and two family teams in today's first heat. Cyberduck from the Cliftonville Middle School in Northampton is in lane one. In lane two from Harpenden in Hertfordshire comes Crocatron, grandfather, son and grandson. In the middle lane, Eric the Eel II from Queen Elizabeth Boys School, Whetstone in Hertfordshire. In lane four, Don Paddle Deluxe comes from Eastbourne in Sussex, a father and two sons. And in the outside lane, Erica the second, entered by the Barking Abbey School in Essex, teacher and two pupils there. From left to right, Cyberduck, Crocodron, Eric the Eel the second, Doggy Paddle Deluxe, and Erica the second. Cyberduck away well, but so is Doggy Paddle Deluxe. And Doggy Paddle looks now showing clear and going very well in a very fast time here. Cyberduck stood in second place with the world record in danger. Doggy Paddle the Loops comes in 16.34, a new world time. In comes Cyberduck to qualify for the next stage. The others nowhere. What an impressive performance by Doggy Paddle the Loops. It's Crocotron comes in third and Erica the second having started in the right lane finishing in the corner of the left with Eric the eel the second knowing the greater importance of taking part so two qualifiers for next week's quarterfinals and doggy paddle deluxe will take a deal of beating in with a splash for today's second heat the Osmonds father and daughter from Shanklin in the Isle of Wight they're well represented in the events this year Father, son and school friend in lane two, Hydroduce from the Leesland Church of England Junior School, Gosport in Hampshire. In the middle lane, Cetacea, entered by the Plantsbrook School in Sutton Coalfield in the West Midlands. Six form students and a teacher. Another robot that took bronze medal in the swimming last year, Brutosaurus from Bruton School for Girls in Somerset. Contrast Bob in the outside lane is a newcomer, but one of six entries in this event from the Commodore Village College in Cambridgeshire. On the right, Bob with the red nose, green is Brutosaurus, green, then Cetacea, then Hydroduce, and then Splash. <laughs> away well so is Brutosaurus but the steering isn't going too well oh and one dinosaur overboard and the steering continues to be bad even so the time is fast Hydroduce in second place Brutosaurus all over the place covering every lane possible but finishing in an excellent time just outside the world record 16.41 Hydroduce coming calmly home to take the second qualifying place Dinosaur recovers from the ducking. Departed halfway down the course. Paddles continued to flap. And the time was excellent. Cetacea claiming the third place. But outside the qualifiers, the two from this heat are Brutosaurus and Hydroduce. And if Brutosaurus can keep it together and sort out the steering, a definite contender for gold this time.
six months very well spent because apparently that's how long it took to make Doggy Deluxe. It was fantastic, it wasn't was it? It was phenomenal. What a speed it went and it broke through the record. Yep. So, so far, 1634, it set a new world record. And then what did you think of Cyberduck? I thought Cyberduck was very, very good, and it would have won had it been in another race. Yeah. We had some fast ones in that heat. Cyberduck was very interesting because Cyberduck had feet that went up and down, made of aluminium, but it had louvers in it, so the louvers opened when the feet went up and the closed when the feet went down, which is a ah. really clever idea. Which is almost like the way a duck's... Y yes, mm, the exactly. feet close when they move forwards yeah. and open when they come back. So then in the next race, of course, Brutosaurus. Now, the question with that was, if that whole hood hadn't come off, do you think they would have broken the record? It's very difficult to tell, isn't it? Because they lost weight. They lost weight. So we'd really have to time the difference in speed from when the hood was off because they might have gone faster without the hood. And in second place, Hydrojuice, which was lovely, and Cetacea, which was also lovely. That was fast as well, 24 seconds. I mean, we're really getting up in here into very fast swimmers, yeah. aren't we? It's yeah. quite incredible, really. Thanks, guys. And there'll be the last of the swimming heats coming up on Monday. And don't forget, later in the program, we'll have live coverage of the cycling final. But before that, we've got tonight's semi-final sumo bouts. Let's have a look at how the contenders made it this far. Richback is on the swing and goes, followed by Hellbound. And they meet at the centre. Oh, but Big Rose and underneath its opponent, British Bulldog, makes the challenge, but is turned aside. Mighty Mouse is dumped off the dojo. In a moment, we'll be going live to see the second sumo semi of the day. But before that, here's Barry with the action from today's first bout. Nice, gentle family contest Jeez, for the first bout Jeez. of today's sumo wrestling. Hellbound uh, from uh, Yelverton in Devon. And Big Bro from Brighton in Sussex. Big Bro on the right. First challenge made by Hellbound. Nice bit of swinging going on here. And he gets underneath him. Oh, that's beautifully done by Big Bro. That's the whole secret of sumo wrestling. World of success. Powerful stuff there. And now let's find out who is going to take the last place in tomorrow's sumo final. Storm Chaser in blue from Huntingdon in Cambridgeshire. Chip from Power Old Colwyn in North Wales. Chip will need to take a leaf out of Big Bro's book, get underneath. Oh, no! He got underneath, then couldn't control. And it's Storm Chaser who comes through. The idea was right, but he just turned his back and said, go on, chum, you're enjoying it. And there was Chip among the tyres, so it's Chip against Hellbound for the bronze medal, Big Bro against Storm Chaser for the gold and silver. So Hellbound and Big Bro, I think the most exciting bout that we've seen so far. Definitely, yes. definitely. What do you guys put that down to? One advantage that Big Bro has built in is that he has a gyroscope, electronic gyroscope, inside the robot. And he can switch that in and out. So when he wants to go in a straight line, he switches the uh, gyroscope in, which corrects for any disturbance. And then we had the spike. Very disappointing match, that. I mean, it, it uh, essentially just drove itself off, didn't it? Well, we have our finalists. Do you think Big Brother is in the Two very good both? robots. I mean, Storm Chaser has more traction, more power, everything else. But it's, I think, Big Bro have more driving skill and more speed and agility. More experience really. and yeah. more cunning electronic devices inside. Thank you very much, guys. And we'll have the final medal showdown in the sumo for you live here tomorrow night. But from the heavyweights of the ring to the lightweights of the track, because today saw the start of one of the most hotly contested events, the lightweight sprint. Now, last year, the necessity of getting through some tough qualifiers was the mother of some very groovy invention. So much so that the Nesta Award for Innovation actually went to one of the lightweight sprinters. So let's see Cheeky Boy and the best of the rest in action. Are we going to get anything as fast as that? Well, maybe. This is uh, Cheeky Boy going really well here. And through to the final without any question. Scuttle and Cheeky Boy, they're away together. And then Scuttle picking up all the pace, not steering terribly well. But it's still going to win in a very fast time. Scuttle gets it right. So does Cheeky Boy. Now I'm pleased to say we're joined by one of the creators of silver medalist and Nesta award-winning sprinter, Cheeky Boy, Peter. You got the Nesta prize to go to Japan, didn't you? Certainly did, yeah. And what did you see there and how was it? Lots of things. We went to the 
robotic university at Osaka, which is a fascinating place. Some very clever machinery they've got there. Interesting. And there was another show of robot boxing. You were interested in a whole range of Japanese technology, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was most impressed with uh, some of the fittings in the hotel room. <laughs> They were very clever, I thought, very innovative. Yeah. I'd never seen anything like them before. So well, was... you'll be relieved to know we've got your video <laughs> diary here. Oh dear. <laughs> Cheeky Boys in Tokyo Technology Discovery, number one, the B Day. Lifetime. Pretty much so, yeah. Yeah. It's very good. It's well worth. I mean, Japan itself is an incredible place. Strange things happen there. Now, strange things happen in techno games. How are you going to perform this year? Well, I'm fa fairly optimistic. I've got new speed controllers, which I don't know if they will help or not. But they should give it a little bit more control. Have the nerves kicked in? You've got a lot to live up to. Yeah. Well, got to try and beat Scuttle. I don't think it's possible. But I'll try. Okay. Best of luck and thank you very much. Now, Andy had a look at this event before returning champion Scuttle and the rest of today's sprinters took up their marks. Now, this is one of my favourite events in techno games. It's fast paced, it's high octane, and usually bits of robot go flying everywhere. It's the 15 metre lightweight sprint. What happens is our robots start over there and they hot foot it all the way down here to our finishing line. First one to cross that line will go through to the next round. It's quite a long way, actually. Hi, we're from Bolton School. I'm Chris, this is David and Greg, and this is Daisy, and she's a mad cow. It's a six-legged sprinting robot. It's got carbon fibre legs, and it steers by altering the stride on one side. Well, slightly mad, maybe, but Daisy did a good job in today's first heat. Kept a good course, too. And the pace wasn't bad, too hot for Crocatron, who finished in second place with the follow-on third. Daisy coming in in a time of 129.31. This is I Like Spike, and it's based on an idea Jonathan's had in his head for about 20 years. It works on a predetermined sequence of extending and retracting legs. Basically, the front legs go in, the back legs sort of come out, and it pushes the whole ball forward in a sort of a zigzag motion down the track. It's extremely cunning. Now, if you'd like details on how this spiking ball of a robot works, then visit the BBC Robot World website at www.bbc.co.uk forward slash robots. London entered bug box, though, was much the quickest in heat two. Spike kept going forward, but not sufficiently quickly. Wiz from uh, County Derry had trouble with direction. And Bigfoot just went at his own pace. And bug box, who came home to win in 47.72, quicker than Daisy but a long distance away from world record figures. So two qualifiers, Daisy and Bugbox, but neither looking likely to be the eventual winner. Here now in Heat 3, the defending champion, Scuttle, very much the favourite again, Mike and his son Jack from Kettering in Northamptonshire. In the next two lanes, family teams, Strutt comes from Dunscroft in South Yorkshire. And Cyber Snail, entered by the Marshals from Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire. And then on the far right, as we shall look, comes Team Lovebug, entered by three friends from Alton in Hampshire. I'm with Cyber Snail, and it's no ordinary snail. We've got an out of balance gyroscope working through 10,000 legs. These are angled backwards and inwards slightly. Each revolution of the gyroscope is taking a little hop and a little step forwards. Scuttle, strut, Cyber Snail, 
Love bug. Is the world record in danger? Oh, and it could be a tremendous start by Scuttle. Little trouble with the steering, but even so, coming home and beating it by clear second. It's a good contest, albeit the slower pace. For second place, Love Bug on the right, Strut on the left. Between them, Cyber Snail bringing up the rear. But the time is very slow. Cyber Snail getting friendly with the lane marker, but really that heat was all about Scuttle from the start. Little legs flying through. Just the problem with the steering, if they get that right, they'll be even faster if that's possible. New world record. Cyber Snail finishes eventually. I think we can safely say that was a very fast robot indeed. Uh, Scuttle, you must be very impressed with that. Brilliant. Now, just to bring you up to date, uh, last time round, you had the world record at 5.4, didn't you? Yeah. Well, you've smashed it. Brilliant. 4.4 this time round. Great, a whole second. Do you think you can go faster than that? Probably three and a half, I reckon, is probably the limit. Are you going to do that in the next round for us? I don't know. If I'm keeping a straight line and it doesn't blow up. I don't think our cameramen are that fast, mate. But, you know, <laughs> congratulations. Well done. You're through to the next round. Let's see how you do then. Thank you very much. So three qualifiers today, but really only Scuttle can beat Scuttle. 4.40, world record again. So I think the thing to remember here is that sprint is a relative term. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Scuttle, we Scuttle, have to Scuttle's immediately refer to. You have to give him credit for that, I think. Beaten his own time. He was yes. world record holder last year. Yes. Now this year, too, so far, and gold medalist last year. Taking another second off as well. Right. One minute it was a start, next second it was at the finish. I mean, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah. However, Cyber Snail. Now, there is a That is a yes, fascinating that's machine. Yes. Flywheel, out of balance. The yes. gyro keeps it in a straight line and vibrates it at the same time, so it sh sort of bounces on this, all these little legs and it leaves a little trail of tap compared mm. behind it. And then in the next race, Daisy Sprint. Mm. What a fantastic mm, robot. Mm. Um, took 18 months to build. I really was impressed it's got six legs to steer it. What they do is they shorten the length of the leg. So you shorten the length of one side, then you can steer it round. And they do that with a little lifting mechanism that just inside that just shortens it. I mean, that's a really clever mm. idea. Yes. And then we had to follow on, came in third there, Crocodron came in second, to follow on as a windscreen wipe. <laughs> The reason is you get a built-in gearbox, and an uh, electric motor is almost useless on its own, but it needs a gearbox, and the easiest way of getting an electric motor and a gearbox cheaply is go to a scrapyard and get a windscreen wiper motor. And then we must talk about Bugbox, which smashed its own personal best. Huge improvement. What are the stats on that? He's an artist who's Ten cast legs, his own well. gears. Ten legs. He's cast his own ball joints and uh, made everything out of plastic all by himself. Mm. What it's got is it's got... It's got an independent motor on each side and they've got no communication with each other so the legs on one side are moving completely independently from the legs on the other side and bigfoot we should mention too that is what you'd call a three-legged biped because the body is a leg it, it stamps its legs forward lifts itself up puts the body down uses that as a leg so i'm with you i'm with it and that's why it's so slow because it's lifting itself off the ground which takes a lot of energy yes. thanks guys and you can see more action from the lightweight sprint on monday now it's back to the training ground to see more gi bots tackle the assault course but first a look at how the competition has shaped up so far just dribble it in and now it's the tires four points away through and get to the finish catch whiskers is about to score but Knocks that out of the way as well as the bricks. Pushing the tyres out of the way and crossing the line. Oh, good positioning by Smash and Grab. Takes it over the ramp. Has the clear advantage. The goal is scored. And Smash and Grab goes through the tyres, driving through 40.16. And Sprocket claims the high ground. Big Row gets through on the inside of the blocks. I'm not sure about that. Beautiful goal scored there. The advantage is with Big Bro, makes light of the tyres. Barry saw the best of today's action. Captain of Shred, Paul Hunt, says he likes building silly things that should do something useful. The opportunity comes now for this team from Leamington Spa. They take on Technomoth from Hemel Hempstead in Hertfordshire, a family team, mum, dad and son. Team stand by to compete. Power up. Red on the near side, Technomoth on the far. Reasonably even start, then Shred gets caught a little bit. Gets 
himself out of the problem of the first obstacle, then gets caught again but gets away. Decides against the ramp, leaves it clear. For Technomoth is going to take it and might gain from it because Shredder's got caught again. Technomoth for the clear lead. Chance to score the goal, which it does. Shred caught again amongst the bunkers. Through the tires goes Technomoth to win in a new world record, 30.5. Shred finally bashes away through the tires, but he's well beat. This was the key. The ramp was left available, and Technomoth took it. The goal scoring a touch dainty, but it was through the tires simply enough for a new world record. E2, something of a West Country contest, with Cobra coming from Taunton in Somerset. Kevin Stone and Julian Brown taking on Hellbound from Yelverton in Devon. The Wilkinson family. Team stand by to compete. Power up. Cobra all of a spin at the start. Hellbound making slow progress. Cobra can't sort it out at all. Just going round in front of the uh, starting line. Hellbound through the first obstacle. And Cobra is out of the contest. It's Hellbound against the clock. Got to get this right on the ramp, though. Go on, put down and go for it. Now it's a question of scoring a goal. Wasn't the most comfortable landing off the ramp. And difficulty here. No control at all with the football. Could be here a long time. And Hellbound deciding to leave the football. There'll be a penalty for that, for not scoring, if you see what I mean. And uh, here comes Hellbound to the finish. But there will be penalty time added. A minute, in fact, to 10.50. Cobra not only didn't finish, it barely started. Two very interesting heats. Um, we're seeing from Technomoth exactly what we thought we should see. Yes. Although I was surprised. I mean, what it was with that, the bridge saved us so much time. Well, they had the other advantage of having that well-adapted scoop for the footballs, which once you've got the football in quickly and easily and accurately, that's uh, a big advantage. The competitors did really badly because they hit the obstacles and that was the slow route. It was, it was yes, really the right. slow route, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and uh, Cobra did even... <laughs> It behaved, like a, it behaved like a cobra, didn't it? Did, it went round and round all over the place. But I Hellbound mean, had a lot of time, didn't they? But I think what's interesting there is they spent a long time trying to score a goal. They rushed it. All they had to do was drift along, line themselves up neatly and push it in. <laughs> but it's stressful out there. It's stressful out there. Thank you very much. And to get the specs on featured Techno Games robots, log on to the Robot World website. Now, we'll have more from the Assault Course tomorrow. But now... Time for action from a brand new swimming event, the Submersible Swimming. This event has evolved as a separate discipline to encourage innovative robot builders who've tried to move beyond the paddle for propulsion. Here's last year's trailblazer, Techno Tyrant, in action. Just as you thought it was safe to go back into the water, here comes Techno Tyrant, but on its inside, Robo Ducky, not impressed at all. Andy took a look at this brand new challenge before the semi-finals. Here we are back at the Techno Games pool for a little bit of ducking and diving, or at least that's what our tech athletes say they can do, because it's time now for our submersible swimmers. Now, these amazing robots can actually swim underneath the surface. And to make sure you lot at home get all the good shots, we've got our award-winning cameraman, Will, in the pool. You all right, mate? He's, he's lying. It's cold in there. Anyway, there's two heats. The two fastest robots from each heat will go through to our grand final. So now it's time to dive, dive, dive and meet the teams. Over to Barry. Some good names in this first heat, starting with Don't Tell Him Pike from Exeter in Devon. And Don't Panic Chris Lever or Mary Lever, presumably. In lane two is Neptuna, entered from Dunscroft near Doncaster in South Yorkshire. Young Callum Stewart, only 12 years old. In lane three, Yellow Bot Marine comes from the York Model Boat Club. Lane four is controlled by three Scots who spent 50 pounds on a piece of pipe and called it Drain Pike. And in the outside lane, Henry entered by the multi-robot Cook family from Tewkesbury in Gloucestershire. Well, 
is Don't Tell I'm Pike. And my word, this thing's got a microprocessor in it, 14-bit. It processes a million pieces of information per second in order to send the signals to the two servos here to control the rate, pitch, and amplitude of the tail. Do you know, I think this, this fish has more technology in it than we've ever seen on Techno Games. Will it be enough technology for victory? Team, stand by to compete. Power up. Thumbs up, ready for the start. Don't tell him Pike doesn't get away anything like as well as Yellow Bot Marine. Yellow Bot Marine's going to win this lovely underwater shot. Here comes Drain Pike, doing a passage through. But it's going to be a smooth and comfortable victory for Yellow Bot Marine. 20.59 the winning time. Drain Pike in second place. Those two qualify in third comes Neptuna. Nice style, not enough pace. And don't tell him Pike was weighed down by all that technology. Rustling along the bottom and Henry whirling away. None of the others a match for Yellow Bot Marine. First winner in the submersible event. And it just goes to show that our expert doesn't get everything right. Winning time, obviously a new world record. The first time the event's been held. Yellow Bot Marine, Drain Pike second, Neptuna third. Heat 2 sees Silverfish entered by a family team from Cromford in Derbyshire in lane 1. In lane 2, all on his own and with uh, shark-like tendencies, comes Predator under the guise of Paul Green. Lane 3, Sinking Feeling from Buxted near Uckfield in East Sussex. Father and son, they find sharks on both sides of them because in lane 4 comes Techno Tyrant. The other half of the shark building team from Croxley Green, now mother and son. And in the outside lane is Jack Flash from the Bedard team, Charlton St. Giles in Buckinghamshire. Now I'm here with Silverfish. Take a look at this. We've got 16 NICAD cells in here strategically placed for balance and ballast. We've got an ingenious worm-driven pulley system buried inside which produces a constant pulling motion that alternates between each side on the tail. That in itself induces a corangiform swimming motion, which is basically the whole tail and rear part of the body acts like a normal fish. This is an extremely high quality build and that's what we want on Techno Games. Hi, I'm Paul, this is Tom, this is Izzy. We're Team Flash and this is our robot, Jack Flash. It's a fully submersing robotic fish. It's got three motors all joined together, give it extra power. They drive through a band, through into a gearbox, and that waggles the tail, and off it goes. And we're going to knock the competition dead with this. They're going to be standing. Sharks in lanes two and four. Very different looking robots in the middle and on either side of them. And it's Techno Tyrant who makes the best start, and Jack Flash following. Techno Tyrant, ooh, that's almost too realistic to look at. That's better. Techno Tyrant's going to win, and Jack Flash following alongside Techno Tyrant with a very good time, very nice motion. What's happened to Jack Flash? Oh, qualified underneath him. I was worried for just a minute. Who's going to take the third place? It looks like sinking feeling, but the Durrants will have that, because only the first two qualify for the final. Two non-finishers, one shark and one silver fish. The slower heat, but Techno Tyrant and Jack Flash both qualify for tomorrow's final. The winning time, 26 seconds. I think these have got to be the most impressive robots. A, they're beautiful to watch, yes. and B, they are a real achievement, yes. aren't they? they Working are indeed, in a different yes, medium. Yes. And what the do you think of the ones we've just seen? Techno Tyrant. Uh, we gave that last year the award for being the most animal-like, and they ran it again this year, but it looked to me like it was much faster than last year. It was quite surprising. And what they've done is they've moved the rudder from the back to the front. Yeah, Jack Flash is fascinating because he made that beautiful machine in, in a mould in his wife's oven, using just ordinary materials he got from his local mod shop. But then back 
to, um, we had Yellow Bot Marine in the other race and Drain Pike. What did you think of Drain Pike? It was very good, but not so animal like, really. No, absolutely not. And it's one of the aims of Techno Games, of course, yes. natural movement. Yes. But as you said earlier, Martin, natural movement means. It means it's going to be slow. Yes. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's complete nonsense. Oh, if, you no. put, if you put a real tuna in there, it would go really wins. fast. Technology no way. Nature every time. I'll stop you there. Thank you, guys. We'll have the climactic action from the submersible swimming final live in tomorrow's show. But now more action from the football pitch where, of course, a place in the semi-finals was at stake. Barry Davis was there as the competition got serious. North and South combination, Celestial Terror and Smash and Grab. First from West Yorkshire, the second from Lansing in Sussex. And they take on Savage Toaster from Milton Keynes and AAT from High Wycombe. Off-pitch teams, ready with the tactics. Here comes the whistle. And the three of the four meet at the center circle. Nobody showing too much interest in the ball. Celestial Terra coming back and leaving it now to smash and grab to defend. The ball locked between uh, smash and grab and AAT comes loose. We've had some high-scoring games so far, but this one looks a little more defensive in style. Not a great deal of interest in the ball, but that's a good run-in by AAT to open the goal scoring. Very much an individual goal. Nice control. AAT again. Smash and grab. Goes to meet him, tries to steer him away. But the ball is going to run over the line. It's 2-0 to AAT and the Savage Toaster. The uh, dominant robot. Again, a run in from the right. Well, they've got to do something about that. There's no defensive cover on the left side at all. Delight for the Ingalls family. Toaster putting the pressure on this time. And it's another goal. Very one-sided contest. AAT, star of the show. Nobody challenging. Can it uh, get its left and right together? Final whistle has gone. Rather strange finish. And the uh, questionable reward for AAT and Savage Toaster is to take on the high scoring Snowstorm and Cat's Whisker in the semi final. Well, it probably wasn't the most exciting match of the lot, was it? No, no. Less goals than the others. Yes. Yeah, far fewer goals but than the others. The best others. robot was the most powerful. It's, it was the most technically sophisticated. It's got a electronic gyroscope in it which enables it to go in a very straight line when it wants to yeah. so that's one of the reasons it was the most successful goal scorer well smash and grab wasn't too bad it made a valiant effort but um, the toaster didn't do much it would have been better in goal I think who would you like to see AAT and Savage Toaster up against and what would make the best match do you think uh, it's the best one is Big Bro. Yeah, but it's difficult to tell what you'd like to see Savage Toaster and AA up against because you'd like to see Big Bro up against Storm Chaser probably. Yes. Thanks again. Next up, we've got the live cycling final for you. This is how the finalists made it here. As it comes to the finishing line, and it's a new world record. Very clever machine. And it turns back towards the finish to be picked up at 106.87. Well, now we can go live to Andy down by the track. Andy, we've seen the technology come on leaps and bounds since last year. So who's looking good down there, apart from your good self, of course? I've got to be honest with you. This is too close to call. I don't know. I don't know which one of these teams is going to be walking away with the gold medal. Uh, first of all, Looney team. You make yourselves really difficult here with just one wheel. Why? Why not get stabilizers and have another wheel? Well, we found that the wheel was the most simple thing and the most reliable thing. It doesn't have any problem balancing when it's moving. And over here, what? you have the world record. You did it in the really? heat. Yeah, you shaved 10 seconds off. Well, I didn't know. You are the new no. holders of the world record. Too well, nervous. We've got to go nervous. home with something. Now, another thing I want to know is, like, yeah. your machine, you can do 15 miles now, but it can go faster, can't yeah. it? Never owned up. Why don't you do that for us today? Why don't you just go for it? Those concrete blocks are bloody solid. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, best of luck, teams. Thank you. One of you will be winning the gold medal. Good One luck, of guys. you will be winning silver. Over to Barry.
school team against family and friend, Bolton School Greater Manchester enter Looney Cycle. And from Chesham in Bucks comes Whiz Bang 2. Looney Cycle in the back straight. Team stand by to compete. Whiz Bang 2 in the home straight. Power up. Two laps of the track going for gold. And down goes Whiz Bang, but it's up again as Looney Cycle has the early advantage. Being chased though now by Whiz Bang. Going at the greater pace, lovely little turn into the bend. It looks so realistic. Looney Cycle losing pace and therefore losing balance and control. And Whiz Bang goes round the outside of it. It has to win. Looney Cycle up and running again. But Whiz Bang coming down the home straight to take the victory. Looney Cycle then has a collision with the wall. It's an unfortunate end for Looney Cycle. But a brilliant performance by Whiz Bang 2. You can't ask for more than to win a gold medal in a world record time. And that's precisely what Whiz Bang 2 has achieved. They've overcome the steering difficulties which so plagued them last year. And to the crowd's applause, have taken the gold medal in a time of 28.97. Looney Cycle, the silver medalists, and Bob Pike, the bronze. Fan. Fantastic. Looney, so I thought we had it in the bag. Oh, yeah, well, we just found it really difficult to navigate it at low speeds in this sort of confined area. <laughs> and you were running around like a trooper. <laughs> yeah, I've got to make sure it doesn't completely destroy itself like it did last time. <laughs> um, Steve is behind me, which means only one thing, that the medals are here. It gives me great pleasure to give you the silver medals. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause, please, for Looney Cycle! <laughs> and over here. Now, Ryan. <laughs> At the beginning of this, you were a little bit, you know, you weren't too happy. Oh, no, I was very nervous. I was like... Well, that's yeah. that. Yeah. I've yeah. got to say, you had us worried at the beginning because you. we went green light and you just oh, fell off. Once he got Gordon got it running again, oh, I was all right then. Did that's you good. did you open it up? It seemed a little bit faster this time round. Still, no, I wasn't going to use maximum. So no, still no. more power. That was we'll never know. half to three quarters. Are you going to come year? back next year? Oh yeah, definitely. absolutely. Hey, with a different ramp. With a different <laughs> ramp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, well done. Thank you. Once again, here are. The Techno Games gold medals. Ryan, I give them to you. Thank well you. done. You are our gold medalist. Whiz Bang 2! Well, that to me is what Techno Games is all about. Incredible. Yeah. Creativity, huge creativity and imagination, and oh. then the technical wizardry to make it all happen. Whiz Bang wins. Yep. Whiz Bang gets the gold with a great time. 28.97. Yeah. yeah. That's very good. And what did you think meters. of the technology there? Whizbang was very good, and it was it was also really nice to see it the way the servo tilted the little man over, and it looked really realistic, didn't it? But I, uh, for me, hat hat off to uh, Looney Cycle. Yeah. I think that was extraordinarily creative. That that's the kind of thing I really like to see. How I think that's work? what technical How games is for. It work, it's a clever combination well, of having a fairly heavy wheel. And, but having most of the weight, the batteries and the motors, below the level of the axle. Another clever aspect of it was the steering. Yes. Uh, they have two oh, electric brilliant. fans which just blow air one way, which tends to tilt it the other way. Thank you very much. And remember, you can cast your online vote for your favourite robot in our People's Vote. Here are the robots you can pick from today's competition. Spike, not a record smasher, but a surreal design. Whizbang, the winner of cycling, it's been tweaked from last year. Is it unbeatable? Coming up tomorrow, heats in the rope climb, semis in the football, plus finals in the stumo, micromouse and submersible swimming. But that's it from today at the Technodrome, where we saw shark-like Don't Tell Him Pike, one of the most sophisticated robots in the tournament, with a 14-bit microprocessor and one kilobyte of code sync like a stone, which should allow all mammal and marine life to breathe a sigh of relief. At least until next year, good night. If you'd like details of how to take part in Techno Games 2003, call 08700 100 678 for an application pack. Or if you have a text phone, dial 08000 15 33 50. BBC Two back at the Techno Games then tomorrow night at 6.45. Over on BBC One now, it's EastEnders. <laughs>